Okay, so this is the post-lab analysis for the Crystal Violet Kinetics Lab. And so in this thing, you should have some data, and hopefully it looks sort of like this, where you have uh, time, uh, and you have your uh, data. Maybe you'll have two sets of data, but let's just do one of them here uh, this time. So, um, so in this case, I've got a lot more data than you guys have. But So what we're going to do is we're going to plot this according to the three integrated rate laws, and so it's pretty easy in Excel to be able to manipulate this, uh, this data and then get the plots. Okay, so we will first, let's just do the manipulation of the data. Um, so we know that for a zero order reaction, we need um, a uh, uh, absorbance, uh, in this case, concentration versus time, will yield a straight line. Um, so we'll just keep that as is. So that'll be our first or zero order reaction. Our first order reaction then is the natural log of the absorbance. Okay, so that would be that'll be our test for um, for a second order process. So I'm using Excel. This is a Mac version, but I think it's pretty much the same. And then I my big problem is that I've got a lot of uh, data here, so I've got to try to stretch this. Uh, let me zoom back in. So I need to, I have a lot more data than you're going to have, so I need to zoom this down as low as I can go. Okay, so that'll give me that. So now we go back here. Okay, so that is the natural log plot. And then for a second order, uh, and you know, it doesn't really matter how many significant figure is, we're going to do one over the absorbance. And absorbance, because of Beer's law, we know absorbance is directly correlated to the um, concentration, and so that allows us to then do the oops, I put in an equal sign. All right, so then, and then, like I said, I've got a lot more data than you guys have, so. Stretch it all the way down. Okay, so that will give us that. Now we're going to plot. In this case, we will plot um, the three graphs. So we'll do this one first. We'll do time versus absorbance. And I've got my challenges here with my large amounts of data. Okay, but that'll allow me. And then I'm going to make just a scatter plot. I'm not going to connect anything. I'm going to make a scatter plot. Okay, and it's going to put a way over there, which. Try to shrink this down so we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so we've got that. Now we need a different title. So we'll call this the zero order test. Okay, and we'll get rid of that. We need to add to make a good chart. We need to add some axes. Like I said, if you have them, I'm not sure if the PC is the same version, but yeah, I, don't, I don't like these little lines, I think they're a pain in the butt. Okay, so here we've got time in seconds, and here we've got absorbance. Okay, so then we need to add, I think I spelled that wrong. There we go, absorbance, okay. So then the other thing we need to do, now we, like I said, I have a lot of time points here. Um, the other thing that we have to do is we have to add a trend line. So if you right click on it, add a trend line, we want to add a linear trend line. And we want to show both the equation and the R squared on the chart. Okay, now you might 
want in the grand scheme of things, you might want to make these, uh, whoop. In the grand scheme of things, you might want to make this a little bit, the text a little bit bigger so you can read a little bit better. Uh, or to maybe make the graph a little bit bigger. It's all kind of up to you. All right, so there's the zero order test. Now, the nice thing is once you make one graph, it's really easy to make a bunch. You just copy them. You guys probably have the, whoops, don't want to do that. You just copy it. click off the graph and then paste it. And we'll go ahead and make three of these total. All right. So now for the first order test, we'll just move the data over one. And then we'll change this now absorbance to natural log of absorbance and this to first order test and that gives you that and then call this the second order test and we'll move its data from there over to there and this is one over the absorbance all right, so if you do that, then you can see, you can compare the R-squared values, but it's most important to look at the graph because these R-squareds are all really good, okay? Uh, but if you notice, this one is slightly better, and if you look, you've actually got a nice, uh, if you look, these kind of have data, you know, even though it fits well, you can see that it sort of has a bow. This one has a bow kind of on one side, and this has a bow on the other. Okay, so, so this definitely appears, my data appear to follow a first order test. Okay, now the rate law in this case may be, um, you know, K is in the slope, but it's an observed K. So you have to remember that all we're doing here is looking at one particular concentration of crystal violet and one particular concentration of sodium hydroxide. So, um, so this K isn't a true rate constant because you got both components in there. But what you can do then is you can, in the second set of data. So you'll do this for this data. You'll do it for the next data again. And you'll compare those two. Okay, and so the K then, and this goes through the lab manual, the K value, so figure out, hopefully they have the same order. Um, but then if you compare the Ks, you know, if you double the concentration of sodium hydroxide, you'll see a change in this K. And if you follow the lab manual about how to break this down, you should then be able to solve for what the order of the sodium hydroxide is as well. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Excel makes this a lot easier than the old days when you had to, if you had to use graph paper and linear regression, but it's pretty trivial to do the transformations now. So, um, so I would expect all three of these graphs for both uh, reagents, for both conditions, and, and you should have it properly labeled with all the things like that are described here. Okay.